Hello everyone and welcome back to Genie Crafts. In today's video we are going to talk about how to make a colored string portrait and in the next video which I'll be publishing I'll be talking about how to generate the template for the same. So this is the colored portrait that I recently made and for which I also posted a shot and today we are going to see the different things that we need to take care of when we make a colored portrait. So to start with uh, there are a total of six things that we need to know about before we start making a colored portrait. So the, I think the first question that everybody will think that how many nails are going to be sufficient for a colored portrait and let me tell you by running experiments I know that your nail count cannot be less than 300. And the next is board size. While this portrait that I made was on a 100 centimeter diameter board but you can also make similar kind of portrait on a 24 inch diameter. Your thread weight cannot be less than 80. The lesser the weight, the thicker the thread. So if you can work with even higher weight threads, that's good. And finally, uh, how many minimum number of lines that you would require by running experiments on different algorithms. I know that the minimum number of lines is 5000 at least through my program. Uh, but the app which I'll be discussing uh, later on in the next video will require a minimum of 20,000 lines. So when you'll generate template through uh, any program, uh, this is the output from my own program, the program that I had written to get to this point. Uh, but the apps that are also available in the market and the, any there are many paid websites also available in the market which will you know provide you algorithms to generate this kind of uh, output. The one thing that you need to look clearly is that are the lines overlapping each other in the final image that you get out of the template or they are changing the color when one colored line is crossing over the other color line. If it is the second case where at the intersection the color is changing then that means that that template is not going to work. So uh, you know this is something that I will discuss in my next video also but for now just wanted to give this a little tidbit of information. The prepping process for the board remains exactly the same as we do for black and white string portrait and uh, I have covered a lot in my previous video so you can refer to them. Just one thing you need to take care of that your MDF board or the wooden board that you are using cannot be less than one centimeter thick because if it is one centimeter thick due to the large number of lines involved in a colored string portrait the tension of the string is going to bend the board. And one thing also you need to take care of that bigger the circle that you are going to use, thicker the board needs to be. So if you are using a one meter circle, you're, if, it's preferable if your board is like uh, two centimeter uh, thick instead of one centimeter. But if you are using a 24 inch board, then even one centimeter thick board is also going to work. So, so uh, take care of this when you are selecting the size for your portrait and the thickness of the board. Both are correlated to each other. Uh, the next step is fairly simple. I, uh, you know, uh, take out a circular, uh, a circular paper which will act as a background. Now, for colored portraits, uh, it's important that you select the background carefully because uh, uh, while some some you know apps have fixed colors in which they generate the template. For example, CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and white. And uh, then there are there will be some websites. I'm not aware of any such for now, but I'm pretty sure they will come in future where they will allow you to select the color. Now, so, so it's important that uh, you choose the background color carefully. Uh, preferably, I would say that do not go for a white background because the image images do not come good on a white background for a string color portrait and because I have run experiments so I know this uh, it's preferable that if you have a, a beige background or a pastel yellow background or even a you know a pastel coffee color uh, background will also work so depending upon the skin tone of the person so uh, in my case it's 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 a brown skin tone so uh, a pastel yellow color worked fine with the rest of the colors that were coming up. If you are going for a, a dark skinned uh, portrait then uh, in that case uh, you can go for a pastel coffee color so that will uh, you know uh, capture the essence of the portrait uh, quite uh, beautifully after it is completed rather than if you you know do it uh, on a white background. So uh, think about these parameters uh, you know these things before you 
actually select the background of the color and since we already have white thread in the mix in most of the cases white and black thread are like a common thread so it's preferable not to go for a white and a black background next step is to uh, generate the nail placement diagram so uh, this is how i have generated now this was a big board so you can see that um, i have created a patchwork of printouts if you want to know how to do this then you can join the channel membership uh, uh, on my channel and uh, you get uh, access to exclusive videos just meant for the channel members so you can see that there are dots uh, on the edges of this uh, uh, diagram so those dots represent the nail positions now the next step is obvious that you need to hammer in your uh, nails and uh, if you want to know how to select the right kind of nail once again join the channel membership and you get to know all about that there so once you have uh, you know hammered in the nail then we proceed to the next step after you have uh, removed that uh, printout for the nail placement then uh, go ahead and number all your nails depending upon uh, from where you have generated the template your nail numbering will either start from zero or, or it will start from one now let's take a first look at how the template looks when it gets generated from the app or from any other program so every program will generate the template like this for every line it is going to tell you the color the starting point for that line and the ending point for that line so it's quite obvious that if one color is going continuously the starting point of next line of that color uh, will be the ending point of the previous line of that color but if i you know go ahead and take print out of such 5000 lines it's going to cost me a lot of paper so what i do it uh, do is that i go into excel and i change the template like this where simply uh, the color name and the pin where i need to connect to that color so uh, at the starting of the template uh, you know for every color we have the starting line the starting and the ending point and once those starting lines are drawn then we just follow the sequence for the color as they come and whenever uh, there will be a color switch you will see that the color changes so i have used acronyms b for black r for red y for yellow w for white and so on so if i am doing uh, red line it will be R R R R and if the color changes to yellow then it will become Y Y Y Y along with the pin number where it needs to get connected. So these are the colors that I selected uh, for this colored portrait uh, red, white, yellow, cyan, uh, green and black and apologies for my blue hair it was in celebration of completing this colored portrait. Uh, so yeah uh, like I said in the template earlier the first thing your template will provide is the starting and end point for all the colors so it will provide one line for yellow one line for black one line for you know cyan white and so on so that for all the colors you have the ending points now so whenever that color comes in the template you just need to start from the ending point of that color and you know follow the nail sequence that the template tells you to follow now while uh, the shade that your application will use to generate the template you might not have the exact shade of the thread but that's completely okay even if your shade is slightly up and down uh, as as per the shade of your application your portrait is still going to come out in reality when we actually make the portrait as long as the color of the thread that you have chosen is somewhat near the you know sh shade that has been used by the program your portrait is going to come out just fine so don't need to worry about that once you have connected the start and the end line uh, next important thing that you need to do is that to keep each spool of thread in a separate bowl or a spool holder if you have a spool holder nothing like that but uh, if you don't have a spool holder you can use bowls in which the spool can you know rotate freely and you have to put it separately reason for this is because of the color switching that happens during uh, you know when you follow the template the threads get entangled very quickly this was something that i had a lot of trouble when i started making the portrait until i figured it out that you know i need to separate out all the threads in their own bowls and keep changing the position of the bowl as one color ends and the other color starts so for example you can see that white and yellow are at the top of the frame here of, of the video frame you can see at the top the, in in the glass bowl is the white thread and in the black 
wall is the yellow thread now suppose i'm currently working with a uh, uh, black thread if my black thread ends uh, in a nail sequence which is between the uh, resting points for the uh, yellow and white then i need to pick up my bowl and place it between the yellow and the white bowl because otherwise what will happen is that under your portrait under your board uh, your threads will be hanging down right so uh, so they will start getting entangled and if they get entangled it becomes very difficult to actually unentangle them so this is what i meant by those initial six point the thread in thread entanglement which is the which was the six point you basically need to take care of that you need to keep changing the position of the bowl depending upon the resting point for each color of the thread as you follow the template can you see that i am moving the bowl to a comfortable position where it, it will not entangle with the rest of the threads and once i am done with this black thread then i am going to place it in between uh, wherever uh, you know the black thread stops whatever position it stops i will place it according to that okay now i will uh, switch back to the actual portrait now that i have covered the basics of how to start with your colored portrait so as you can see that the board size of the actual portrait was quite big uh, there were a total of 360 nails and uh, the diameter of the circle that you see was around uh, i think 90 cm 90 91 cm that was the diameter and the placement diagram once again i generated with the help of the uh, ppt now uh, few things few more things that we, you need to take care of besides what i have already covered in the video let's talk about uh, you know the tension in the string so if you remember uh, if you have seen my uh, black and white video there i have told that you have to maintain a comfortable tension in the string so that it's not loose it's not slack and at the same time uh, you know it's not uh, uh, that tight that you know your thread breaks but in case of colored string portrait because there is a color switch happening after every few lines uh, depending upon the template sometimes the color switch you know does not happen for many lines but sometimes the color switch will happen after every single line so because of the color switch that is happening and you can see in the video that color switch is happening uh, you have to rest one thread and you have to start with the new thread now the thing is that when you stop a thread there is no way to uh, tie a proper knot there because for that you need to break the thread and then you need to tie the knot uh, but we cannot break the thread also because we need to continuously use the same thread uh, but at the same time we need to tie the knot also so we tie uh, a very temporary kind of knot i will show in in a while how that knot is tied and Uh, we let the thread rest but what happens is because these knots are temporary the tension in the string starts to loosen over time so it's important that if you are maintaining a certain tension when you are doing a black and white portrait you have to maintain slightly higher tension in a colored portrait when you are weaving your thread between the nails this is to compensate for the loosening that will happen when your thread is at rest once your uh, portrait is completed then you can break the thread and you know tie a proper knot but during the creation of the portrait you cannot uh, tie a proper knot because otherwise you will just end up tying knots because the color switch happens so much to ensure that you get a realistic kind of portrait so take care of this about the tension of the string that you need to maintain now let's see uh, how do we tie the knot whenever we have to switch from one color to other how do we rest a thread so whenever you, whenever you have to tie the knot the first thing that you do is that you loop the thread uh, on the nail itself couple of times then you loop the thread in your finger and kind of cross the thread with itself and then place that loop on the head of the nail and ensure that when you pull the thread that loop tightens around that nail so it kind of creates a temporary knot and if you are not satisfied with one knot uh, and i would suggest that do not get satisfied with one knot always tie at least two to three knots so that even if the outermost knot loosens a little bit there are still two more knots uh, you know for it to go through before the thread actually starts to loosen but even with all the knots uh, you will see 
that over a period of time your uh, thread will start to loosen up if you do not finish your portrait uh, like within few days time and you know close the threads properly at the end point of the uh, end point of your project so you have to uh, do this kind of knotting process whenever you are switching the color a uh, few more things that uh, we need to consider when making a string color portrait is that when you hammer in your nails uh, please ensure that there is at least 1 cm space available for you to loop the threads it seems a lot uh, but trust me when you start making a colored portrait the space on the nail body gets exhausted very quickly it gets consumed very quickly reason being because of the total number of lines that you uh require to make a colored portrait to get that uh, realistic rendition of the actual photograph and uh, let me tell you when i ended up making this uh, colored portrait i even got the blush on the cheeks uh, captured with the help of the strings my string portrait was uh, that realistic and it happened only because i utilized a large number of lines and uh, you know uh, did not uh, cut corners uh, when doing the lines so so it's important that uh, your nail has at least 1 cm space available for you to loop in your threads so that's one point uh, second important point is that uh, after every few pages or after every few thousand lines push all the loops down to the base of your board Uh, so that there is a space available for the new loops that you need to create uh, it reduces the shadow effect of the threads that's one for sure uh, but it also makes it easier for you to make colored portrait because if you keep looping just under the head of the nail again and again and again after some time uh, the loops will start you know to come out of the nail body without uh, uh, without any external force because the you know the there has been so many loops under the nail so it will just start to come out there is no more place so keep pushing uh, your loops windings down to the base of the board after every few thousand lines and the last thing that i want to cover is uh, that this kind of colored portrait uh, requires switching of the colors every now and then and i think uh, i spent more time you know tying the knots to switch the colors and rearranging the bolts in which the thread spools were there so that they do not entangle i spent a lot more time in these activities than actually looping the uh, thread around the nails but without these two activities you won't be able to prepare your colored portrait so so if you want to make a colored string portrait uh, you have to have a lot of patience because uh, you know you will want to just stop and throw it into the dustbin after every few thousand lines but once the po- picture starts to appear that's when the encouragement uh, you know starts to happen so you just have to keep at it and ensure that you f- follow the template uh, to the letter even if your template says that uh, one line of black uh, then two lines of yellow then another line of black then one line of red Uh, you know then then 10 lines of white then another two lines of red and yellow and so on so you can see that there is a lot of color switch happening this color switch happens so that uh, your final output gets that exact same shade of color as the picture on which you have developed the template so it's important that you do not uh, cut corners on this color switch saying that oh the black thread you know is coming after few more threads again so let me just do it first and then i will do the red thread while doing it once or twice will not ruin your portrait uh, but you never know it can be very critical line which uh, might not just get covered up uh, during the rest of the portrait and it will look very odd in the final result so uh, you have to persevere and uh, you have to ensure that you are following the template to the letter take lo- breaks in between if you are getting exhausted which is kind of bound to happen uh it took me around 50 hours to get this particular portrait done without and and i'm not uh, you know counting the break time in this i'm just counting the hours i spent looping this thread around these nails so so yeah uh it is a difficult art 
as compared to black and white which i can do in just two hours i can create uh, one uh, string portrait in in anywhere between two to five hours uh, but this one colored string portrait has taken me between 40 to 50 hours so so yeah uh, it's a daunting task but uh, if you persevere and if you follow through with it the end result will be worth it so i think that's about it what i wanted to cover uh, for the things that you need to take care of when you are preparing a colored string portrait and uh, in the video description you will find the link for a colored template which is you know just for practice if you want to make your own this is one free template that i'm providing to everyone so you guys can download it and uh, you guys can make a portrait on it and for now just enjoy the time lapse of this colored portrait So guys i hope that uh, you found this video useful if you guys like the video then please don't forget to hit the like share and subscribe button and you can always use the free template provided in the video description to practice your own colored portrait and uh, if you guys have any questions then please don't hesitate to ask and i will see you guys in the next part of this video where i am going to show you how to generate the template till then stay safe take care and bye bye